circumstance and he gave you another chance hallelujah Hallelujah. it's real easy song just help us out and say this say my God reigns my God reigns our God reigns our God reigns Lord you reign Lord you reign above every name hey my God reigns Say, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. With power and majesty. majesty. He's given me authority. authority. He reigns. You You got it. Help us say, with power. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion, authority. You reign. You reign. If you got it, help us lift it up. Hey. Say, my God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns. Hey, Lord, you reign above every day. Hey, my God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. Say, Lord, you reign above every day with power and majesty, dominion, authority. You reign. The Lord reign, reign above every name. Hey, my God reigns. My God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. You reign, reign above every Stay name. Right yeah, hey, my God reigns. My God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, Lord, you reign. reign above One more time. Every name. Hey, say, my God reigns. My God reigns. God reigns, our God reigns, Lord you reign above every name, watch this, so over my circumstance, giving me another chance, you reign, can y'all help me say that, everybody say over, over my circumstance, giving me, giving me another you chance, reign. you reign, I think you got it, say over my circumstance, Over my circumstance, over my circumstance, giving me, giving me another chance. Hey, you reign, hey, you reign, you reign, and we thank you and we praise you. Hey, you reign. 
reign. Yeah, you reign. Hey, you reign. Come on, everybody, let's say it together. You reign, say. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Over my family, over my church, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Come on, let's shift to Claire. Yeah, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Song says, You are my strength like no other. In the fullness of your power. Hallelujah. You are no sh- my strength like no other. Oh. You are my strength, and strength like no other. Yeah, strength like no other. Preaches to me. Help me out, help say. You are my strength, oh. Can we just say that as one big choir? You are my, are my yeah. oh, 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 strength, strength like, like no other. other. Say you are my strength, strength like no other. Reaches, reaches to me. Oh, so when, say in, in the, the
Everybody say amen. Come on, say amen again. It's good to be in God's house this evening, is it not? And we want to thank God for allowing us to live, move, and breathe, and be in his house this evening. If you love the Lord, why don't you put your hands together and give him praise this evening. We want to thank God for our praise team and leading us in our praise and worship and our band. Uh, give God some praise for them as well tonight. We're happy to see each and every one of you. We welcome you to this rally program this evening for the Breath of Life Fall Revival 2019. We are here because we are at war with the enemy. God has claimed Southeast D.C. God has claimed the entire District of Columbia. God has claimed his people, his men, women, uh, boys, and girls. They all belong to him, and we are here to make sure that God's word is proclaimed. I'm just happy and tickled pink to be a part of this marvelous ministry. Just want to let you know that the crusade begins, the revival begins on October 5, Saturday evening, October 5. What date did I say? October 5. On a Saturday evening, 2019, we will be here every night except for Monday and Thursday night. We'll be here every night except Monday and Thursday night. You are welcome to come Monday and Thursday night, but you'll have to praise him on the steps. But we are in the house uh, every night except Monday and Thursday evening. We want to also let you know that there will be a special vacation Bible school for uh, the children who come each night, and so they will have a special program. Our team is working feverishly now, and God is uh, blessing them to make sure that everything is in readiness for you. We thank God for Dr. Bird. Come on, say amen. Uh, he's here and there and everywhere, and God's blessings are upon him, and he is here. I just saw him walk through the door. So I can put my notes away. Amen, amen, amen. Because we're going to have church anyhow tonight in his house. I um, want you to, uh, uh, if you, some of you don't know me, I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Marcus Harris. I'm the senior pastor here. Our assistant pastor, Pastor Van Guy Tanashi Mukorum Bendo, is right here. Come on, stand up, Pastor. Let the folks see you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, my wife is in the choir. This is the combined choir. First Lady Arlene, amen. Come on, y'all say amen. Amen, 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 and amen, amen, amen. Where's Sister Mukorum been, though? Where is she? Where is she? I know she's, oh, there you are, there you are, there you are. Come on, wave your hand, and I'm not going to have you stand up. She's, she's carrying extra weight right now. They're due to have a baby in December, so we're praying for them, and she's, she's radiant and glowing. God bless you. Amen, amen. 
But listen, we, we are, are looking forward to uh, seeing you on um, that uh, Saturday evening. But we're going to ask that you keep everything in prayer, especially our Bible workers. I want to introduce, where, where are our Breath of Life Bible workers? I want them to stand right where they are. Come on, Bible workers. This is the team. These are the frontline soldiers. These are the folk who have been out on the streets while the bullets are flying, while the dope is being uh, uh, purchased here and there. They are on the battlefield for the Lord, and they are a blessing to us and to the community. And we are just continuing to ask God's covering over each and every one of them. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, this evening, as we continue to move forward, I want to... Um, uh, present to you the DuPont Park Church Combined Choir, who will now lead us to the throne of grace with a special, special song. Y'all look like I caught y'all off guard. Amen, amen, yeah, the DuPont Park Combined Choir. Amen. This is our minister of music, Brother Norlin Washington. Amen, all right. Yeah. 
everlasting arms of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God brought me through. How about you? This is a time of spiritual revival. We are preparing. We are getting ready. As the outpouring of the Holy Spirit comes upon his people, we're coming together to ask God's blessings upon the work that is going forth. And not only is revival for those on the outside, revival takes place even within our own hearts. We need to be touched by the grace of God one more time. And I always like to, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, lifted up when I hear stories and the testimonies from others about what God has done for you and what God means to you. And this is just an old-fashioned prayer session this evening. And we're just going to spend a little time praising God for his goodness. We're going to spend some time in a season of prayer asking for the bathing of the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to get fired up by the preach word. That's all right, isn't it? That sounds like a good Friday night to me. And so we're going to ask God to have his way in this place. And I just want to give you an opportunity. This is an opportunity for you to share what God has done for you. Now, oh, don't everybody just rush up here right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm going to ask one of the team members. Y'all, one of y'all, come. let me see here. Uh, whichever one feels inclined, just come on, come on. I almost called David right away. Okay, come on, David. Come on, David. I'm going to give one of the others. The rest of y'all get ready, too, because you're coming, too. Uh, Sister Alice, yeah, you get ready. Amen, amen. You can bring, Tro bring Trocon with you, too. Come on up. You're scared now. All right, I know you're not. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, church. We can do better than that. God is good, and all the time. It's a privilege to be here. I have just one thing to say, and Washington, D.C. will never be the same. God is in control. He looked ahead and he saw, and today is the day. And if you don't believe this, you have to understand that. Good evening, Dr. Bird. And each and every one of us, we have a mission and when I look back on my own life just yesterday, you will not believe where I came from. And if God can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. And when I read the story about the spies and the giants in the land, Dr. Bird, I see no giants in this land. I see a mighty God. And when God is in control, everything just falls in place. So I'm here today, this evening, to rejoice in God and to tell you, the God of David is the same God. The same God of Moses when he parted the Red Sea. And you have to believe this because we've come this far by faith. And together we keep pressing on. And when I see on the streets and I hear about the guns and the young people and all of that. And I know that God is in control because today, Dr. Bird, you're here. He looked ahead, way ahead, a long time ago. And he brought you together. And he brought this team together. And he brought forth the church together. 104 years old, but not too old. God is never too late. And now we're here. And now God is here. And when we go down the streets, out of Palmer Street, wherever, God is going to make a difference. In Jesus' name. And the church say amen. I had to come get him. I had to come get him. Yeah, we got Dr. Bird to preach tonight. We got, I, knew, I knew what I was doing when I called him. I knew what I was doing. Where does Sister, uh, where does Sister Alice go? Oh, there she is. Yeah, bring Trocon on with you. Come on, receive him with an amen. Come on now. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. How are you? Happy Sabbath to everyone. Are we excited about this revival that's getting ready to take place? Well, we ought to sound like we're excited. We ought to look like we're excited. We need to go out into our neighborhoods and to our family members and friends and tell them, there's a place that you must come to. October the 5th through the 19th. Have your candles ready. <laughs> 
every night except Mondays and Thursdays. Bring your children, Judith Webb. Everything is fair. God is always fair. And we thank him for the opportunity to be in his service. We thank him that he's allowing us to go out into his vineyard and meet our brothers and sisters, no matter where they are and what they're doing. We just thank him for his covering and his grace and his protection. We met a lady uh, about three weeks ago. Her name is Pamela Johnson. She's already called to be picked up for the revival. She called last week, I think it was, or even two weeks ago. And so we knocked on her door. We were told by one of the ladies in the neighborhood, her name is uh, Teresa Banks, and she said, I want you to go here, go there, go to that door. Beautiful lady. So we went to the doors that she asked us to, to, go, to go to. We arrived at Pamela's door, knocked on her door. She opened it. We introduced ourselves, of course. And she said, well, what is it that you're about? What's going on? And we told her about the revival coming up and the, the Bible studies and what have you. And she said she would like to attend. And so we began to have study with her. She would call mornings and evenings and what have you. We just had a good time with her on the phone and visiting her in her home as well. So we went today also, and Photon will take us on tour. Happy Sabbath. So we, uh, we visited Miss Pamela Johnson today. We had a study with her. And this lady is just hungering and thirsting for the word of God, you know, and so... Um, we were blessed by the pastor to take her her own personal Bible. Because when we first met her, she went ahead of the New Testament. And so we brought her a Bible. She was so happy to receive the Bible. And then she was telling us that, you know, when she reads, she doesn't really understand oftentimes what she's reading. And then we told her about the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, you know, who was reading the book of Isaiah. And he didn't know what he was reading. And the Spirit of God told him to join himself to the chariot. And we say that God has heard your prayers because he knows you need more understanding. And we're all here studying the word of God together. So we, uh, we told her that we're going to be here um, visiting you and studying the word together. And she was happy about that. She has so many questions, you know, about purgatory. We told her we can give you all the answers. You have to come, Pastor Bird, the way he preaches and teaches it, you're going to love it. So she was there with a smile. So she's eager to come here and say the word of God. On another occasion, we were out um, 58th Street, Southeast. Uh, we met a family, uh, this young lady, she wasn't home at the time. We met her uncle and her dad, and we left the lessons with them. We went up the street, we did a few houses. On our way back, we met this young lady with the lessons in her hand, and she was on her way to her friend's house to share the Bible study that we have left with her. And so we said, hey, let's open the word right here on the street and, and go over quiz one. So we, we did the first lesson with her, and she was happy to, um, to study with us, and she took that lesson and ran with it. So there are people out here that are receiving the word and are running to tell others. So we're just thankful to God for using us to, uh, to be a conduit of his grace and his mercy. Amen. Yes. Amen. Come on, give God the praise this evening. Give God the praise. All right, I got, one, I got, I got time for one more, one more, one more. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at the team. I'm looking at the team because they're the ones who've been out there on the front line. Now, y'all done told me some good stories. I want y'all to tell everybody else. Come on, Sister Yvette, Sister Sandra, I'm just going to call you. Says, yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, both of y'all, come on up. Come on, put your hands together for a praise God for them. so good. Uh, it's such a blessing to be part of this ministry and being out on the streets of D.C. It's yeah. not easy, but I did because when we're out there, there's so much going on. You know, we were walking down just this week, and three guys were shadowing us on one side of the street, and, uh, and as we walked by, they kept walking on the other side, like all the way down. So we turned around. And as we turned around, we saw them go back into a house. So I told Sandra, I said, I'm going to go talk to them so they know what we're about. Because, you see, they look like they were protecting their territory. But I want them to know we are here for God's territory. 
so we're going to stop and talk to them. So we looked up, and I walked into the street and said, hey, guys, how are you guys doing today? They were smoking. Everything was going on. It was pretty deep <laughs> in there. But they looked surprised that we even stopped to talk to them. And when we stopped and talked to them, we started, they started to talk to us, to speak with us. And so I said, tell me what do you think. Do you think the earth is more, the, the Bible is more reliable than the earth under our feet? And I went right into it. And they started following and asked the second question on the quiz and started following. By the time we were finished, they were taking the lessons from us and they were talking about the history and I, about Moorish history. And I told them, I said, if you really want some history, you have to go into the word to really find history because the Bible is the book of history. So they, they listened and they said they, they want us to come back. So we're going to come back and talk to them some more. So God has been working. Um, he's been protecting us out on the street and we are really thankful for that. One more little story, we met this, this gentleman, Mr. Lamont, was his name? He said, I'm a minister. I don't need any Bible study from you. I have Bible studies here every week. So we said, okay. I said, uh, so he said, um, I went into the, the lesson again. I said, well, take a look at this and see what you think about it. Just let me know, since you're a minister and you're so good at this word, tell me what you think about these questions. And so he started a question. By the time quiz one was finished, he was asking for five more. He's like, let's do this because I have some people. And in our lesson, we can study this and come back. So there are people out there, and they're receiving God's word. They're taking it from us. They're going even when sometimes they say no but when at, at first. But we were able to get through to them. God is going before us because we pray before we go out there. And he's paving that way. And he's opening doors even when doors want to be closed. And even when they don't want it, the Holy Spirit is working in them, making it happen. So we're glad just to be vessels of him in this work. And I give God praise for that. <laughs> she said, you did a great job. You did great. Come on, let's give God another hand clap. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, when you listen to what God is doing, and we may believe that folk are, are, are cold and hard to the word of God. There is a hunger and a thirst. There's a hunger and thirst. Didn't, didn't Jesus say, uh, surely, the harvest is plentiful. There's no shortage of individuals who want to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. But the laborer the witnesses are few. Christ then admonishes us, pray that God will send the laborers for the harvest. And that prayer focuses on you and it focuses on me. Are we surrendered, ready, willing, to be used by God. These Bible workers, we call this old school Bible work. Knocking on doors. They're not sitting behind a desk making, they're knocking on doors, Lamont. They're in the streets. And God sends angels. God sends angels who walk up to them and say, listen, we know what y'all doing. This is good, but it's six o'clock. Y'all need to get off the street now. Huh? angels watching over each and every one of them. I know that the harvest is already ready. It's coming. I'm just asking God to have his way with us. We want to have a season of prayer at this time. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, we can't do anything else together. We better be able to pray together. Huh? I didn't hear you say amen. If we can't do anything else, we better be able to pray together. So if you would just at this time gather together in groups of twos and threes and we have one singular focus. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your spirit upon our community. God has already touched those who are ready to say yes. And they're not just ready to say yes to Bible studies. They're ready to be baptized. 
Lord, pour out your spirit on us that we would receive them into the family of God as brothers and sisters in Christ. And then we'll be careful to give God the glory and honor. I believe that when we finish up on the 19th, we're just going to stand up and say, look at God. Look at God. See what the Lord has done. In groups of twos and threes, if you would just assume a position of prayer, call upon God, call upon him, cry aloud. Father in heaven, humbly we come before you now. We lift up our hearts, we cry out with our voices, have mercy upon us. In this place, in this room, O oh Lord, loose your spirit. Have your way. Let the healing begin. Let transformation begin. Let miracles begin even right now. Father, we need you so desperately. And our hearts are lifted up because we know that though you sit high, you inclined your ear low. And there's not a prayer that we've uttered that you have not heard. So bless as only you can. 
gather the prayers that have been echoed here today. Satisfy. Protect your workers. Cover them. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Be with us as a church that we will be pliable clay in your hands. That you will mold us and fashion us into that nation of people that will obey and receive your children. Be with those, Lord, who will be touched. Hear the word. Father, quicken them right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Claim them, we pray. Lord, be with your servant, Dr. Bird. Lord, fill him up. I know you've used him in the past. But we're praying for a fresh anointing. A brand new outpouring. Lord, we want you to set him on fire and let him preach boldly as he has never preached before. Use him as your mouthpiece to speak words of truth and life night after night. Bless the musicians, the psalmist. As they minister, Lord, I ask that you will take full control of them. And let your spirit speak through them in all that they do. Here's what we know beyond of a shadow of a doubt. Soon and very soon, we will see the King. And Lord, our humble, earnest desire, our request, is to be ready to meet you in peace. So grant us that. And may we hear you say, well done, good and faithful servants. Come on in to the joy of your Lord. What we fail to ask but stand in need of, Lord, would you grant it according to your loving heart? And we simply say, thank you. In the name of the Father, thank you. In the name of the Son, thank you. In the name of the Holy Spirit, thank you. And we wrap it up by simply saying, hallelujah, great is our God. And the people said, Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for your prayers and for touching. Ain't nothing like coming together and praying to the Lord, is it? There's a church in California that made a promise to its members, and this promise was try God in tithing and obeying God in giving. It made a promise to the church members that if at the end of the year that giving has caused you trouble, come to back to the end of, come back to the church and we will give you all your money back for all the trouble you've been through. Now, I want to tell you all today to try God in obeying your giving. And if at the end of the year, all this giving, all, if at the end of the giving, this has caused you trouble, I want you to come and see me personally, and I will give you the name of that church. And they will be more than glad to refund you the name, all the money that, <laughs> that have caused you the giving. No, seriously, it is time for our giving and we want to encourage each and every one of you to give. And the Lord, you know, will bless in your giving back. We want to encourage you, those who are writing checks, to give back to the Breath of Life TV Ministries. And if so, we want you to write that to them. And as a praise team and the ushers are coming at this time, we want to pray for the offering that will be given for the glory and the use of God. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're going to do during this revival and during this rally. We pray that God, all the funds that you will, that the people will give back to you, that when they are used, they may bless, may, they may bless more abundantly. Bless each and every person who's given as they trust you and try you in giving. Bless us, God, as we give. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. If I never see another day, if I never see a smiling face, or if I never breathe another breath, or take another step, I want to say thank you. If I never see another song, if I never sing another song to be heard, if I never take another bite or see another sight, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all. If I never see another day, hey, if I never see a smiling face, if I never breathe another breath or take another step, I want to say thank you. Oh, if I never say another word, if I never sing another song to be heard, if I never take another step or see another sight, I want to say thank you, thank you for all that you've done thus far. Everybody say thank you for being there. God, that you are, thank you for food on my table. I know, and I want to say, hey, thank you for all, hey, and thank you for me, yeah, say thank you for food on my table, and I want to say, hey. say thank you. Huh? Amen, amen. What a welcome pastor and sister Colin Brathway, Jeannie Brathway, they're here, our personal ministry, well that's not your church ministries, uh, director for the Allegheny East Conference, come on, former pastor here at the DuPont Park, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home, God bless you. Uh, we are going to um, move right along, I want to present 
and introduce in an informal way tonight, um, under instructions, uh, our speaker this evening, our evangelist for the revival. We are so happy to have Dr. Carlton P. Bird as our speaker, director, and leader in this great evangelistic effort. Come to D.C. You just left, what was the last place, Florida? All right. And uh, coming to end the year here in the fall in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, we are just uh, happy. He is a uh, television minister on several international stations. Um, I used to, uh, when I used to pastor the Breath of Life Church in Fort Washington, uh, I would tell folk, uh, yes, I pastor the Breath of Life Church in Fort Washington. They said, are you the one on TV? And I said, well, no, no, that's not, that's not me. You should have seen the disappointment and the dread distress. <laughs> but we, we thank God for his blessing. He is um, the husband of one wife, and he has three children. I asked him to count again, but he has three children. And I think each one of them is in a, a different stage of school, one in college, high school, and in grade school. So go on, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. You know he's anointed. He's anointed tonight. But he's a powerful man of God. God has used them 3,000 plus. That was a couple of years ago. Plus souls have been baptized into the kingdom of God as he has been used under the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you pray for him? No, 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 no. That, that sounds like you're just going to whisper a little prayer. Will you pray for him and ask God to bless his ministry? He's going to come and bless our hearts this evening after we will have been favored by ministry once again from the DuPont Park Combined Choir. Come on, say amen, everybody. Amen.
my joy in the time of sorrow.
Somebody ought to say hallelujah. I said somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Oh, come on, you all. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. I don't know where y'all came from, but y'all sang tonight. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together and praise God for the DuPont Park? Combined choir. I told Pastor Harold, I said, now they can sing, Pastor. And I said, those musicians can play, because I know when people can play and when people play at something. I, basis, I heard you on that run. You saw me look over when I said, oh, he can play. Okay. Praise God. I was in Fayetteville, North Carolina, preaching for their 100th anniversary. And Pastor Harris and I had been talking about music all week long, the week prior to my going to Fayetteville. And uh, I get to Fayetteville, and I'm the preacher for the anniversary. And I look over to the Hammond organ, because the Hammond organist, for me, has to be able to play. And I looked over, and I heard a little run, and I looked, and there was Norlin there. I didn't know who he was. And then they told me that the church in Fayetteville was his home church, but he was there that weekend. And then they told me he was from DuPont Park. And I text messaged Pastor Harris, and I said, we going to be all right. Hallelujah. So, Norlin, thank you for what you've done tonight. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Now, y'all going to have to do better than that. I am excited. I am excited. Come on, you're going to have to do better than that. Come on, brother organist. Where is he? There he is. Yeah. I'm excited. I am excited. Now, listen. I got to preach here tonight. Wake up and catch a 7 o'clock flight and preach in Connecticut in the morning. Then catch a 6 o'clock flight Sunday morning to go back and preach a funeral to Oakwood Church. Y'all going to say amen tonight. Come on, say amen now. Are, are we all together, everybody? I say, are we all together, everybody? All right. I'm glad we're together. We're going to say, you're going to say amen tonight. I'm going to preach like it's packed up in here. Come on, say amen. And you're going to say amen like it's packed up in here. Come on, say amen. All right, I'm glad we're together. Pastor Harris, thank you, thank you, thank you, and your lovely wife. God bless you all. Give him a round of applause, everybody. The, the man of God and his wife over this house. And Pastor Tanache and Sister Tanache. I'll call her Sister Tanache because I won't say the last name and butcher it, and then you'll be mad at me. But God bless you. Give him a round of applause. Amen. Amen. And half of you I know. Amen. Lauren, you are, where's Lauren? Directing the choir. Amen. God bless you. And Roddy back there, you know, we all went to school together. And I saw Judith when I walked in. Praise God. Amen. And Sister Singleton, and I saw Brother Vines. I knew we were going to be safe tonight. Amen. But it's good to see you all. God bless you. Uh, Elder Brathway, good to see you. See you and Sister Brathway. Behind him is Pastor Van Dion Griffith. Pastor Griffith, stand up. Let the people see you. He is a native of the South Central Conference. He is the Associate Youth Director for the North American Division. Give him a better greeting than that, everybody. All right, now I'm doing all this talking because the organist is getting used to me and I'm getting used to him, and I need my sound man. Get, bring me, just give me a little bit more. Give me a little more. I got to preach three times a week. Give me more. Amen. See, in evangelism, we like it nice and strong. Amen. All right, give me a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm not going to kill the people. That's better. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, I want to introduce, Pastor, did you introduce the Bible workers? You did not. Okay, let me do that. Let me do that right now. And I want you to give them a warm DuPont Park in Washington, D.C. DMV. Welcome. All right, I'm going to begin with a young lady who has worked with me for, I want to say, let me see, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16 years. Going across this country, you heard her in, uh, uh, tonight in testimony. Sister Alice Morton, won't you stand? Give Sister Alice a round of applause. <laughs> Alice has worked with us when we pastored in Nashville, Tennessee, Houston, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia. She's now with us at the Oakwood Church in Huntsville, and we're grateful to the Lord she can be with us here in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 2006, I met two wonderful people, wonderful couple in Atlanta, Georgia, when I pastored the Berean Church, and they worked with me there, and they've been working with me ever since. I want to invite Bo and Mae Williams. Will you please stand? Give them a round of applause, everybody. God bless you. They love the Lord, too. Praise be to God. Glad you are here. All right, let me move on. Sandra, I'll go to you. 
I had the privilege in Huntsville, Alabama of baptizing this wonderful lady into God's church. And ever since then, she's been on the battlefield and she's been going and telling other people what she has learned. She is on loan in Syracuse, New York right now, but really with us in Huntsville, Alabama. Give Sandra Sam a big round of applause. God bless you. All right, Trocon, stand up. I had the privilege of pastoring him and serving as one of his professors at Oakwood. Uh, he is uh, now in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, uh, when he doesn't work with us at Breath of Life, he works for Delta Airlines. Somebody say, I got to get upgraded. Come on, say amen. But we are grateful for Trocon Dalmita, who is with us. Give him a round of applause. Then behind him... Uh, was it two years ago, Charlene? Was it two years ago? Two years ago, I had the privilege of running a meeting at the Rubido Church in Riverside, California. And while there in that meeting, there was this young lady who was a worker. She was a hound. When I look for Bible workers, I look for hounds. You know, you got to be able to smell souls. Come on, say amen. And I found her to be a hound. And so I'm grateful that she's been with us ever since. Sister Charlene Kelson, will you stand? Give her a round of applause, everybody. God bless you as well. Then we went down to Miami. Well, before I went to Miami, Florida, where is Yvette? Where is Yvette? Where, oh, there she is. Okay. Yvette worked with us. Yvette, where did, you just came with us, and you've been with us ever since. Two years. Amen. She also hails from Atlanta, Georgia. Yvette Dimondanka, give her a round of applause. Praise God for her. Then we went down to Miami, Florida, where the Lord blessed us this summer with a total of 137 baptisms. Come on, say amen. But I believe God is going to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever think right here in D.C. Do I have a witness to this place? And I met two wonderful sisters, and they will praise God. Now, they're going to lift their hands, and they're going to clap their hands. Don't look at them funny. they just praising God. But I want to acknowledge Paulette. Stand up, Paulette. This is Paulette Sutherland-Smith and her sister, Merton Gray. Paulette is from Atlanta. Merton is from Jamaica. Give them a round of applause, everybody. And then I think I've gotten everybody but these two gentlemen that are with me now. Do I have everybody but the two gentlemen? Oh, Louise, Louise, Louise. So I'm in Miami, Florida, giving away gifts. And I'm giving away gifts, and this lady walks to the front. You know, Pastor, I have to be careful when folk walk up on you. You know, you don't know. But she walks up on me, and she shakes my hand, and she says, I just want to be, meet the man who baptized my daughter into the Seventh-day Adventist church. And I shook her hand, and I learned that she loves Bible work and wants to be a Bible work for the Lord. I said, we're on our way to D.C. She said, I will come. Louise Essence, won't you stand at this time? Give her a round of applause. God bless you. And then certainly last but not least, two men in the army of God. I have never met them until I came in this church and sat on the second row when we had our first workers meeting. But I was referred to David Monlui and Hubert Thomas by Sister Paulette. They're members of her church in Atlanta, Georgia. And so I said, bring them on up to D.C. and let's see what they're made of. I've gotten a report from Pastor Harris that y'all are working. Praise be to God. The Bible workers will always say to me, uh, Pastor, you're working us hard. You're working us hard. You're working us like Hebrew slaves. I said, I haven't started beating you yet. Come on, say amen. But they are workers, and I want to acknowledge David Monlui and Brother Hubert Thomas. Brethren, won't you stand at this time? Give them a round of applause. God bless you. God bless you. We are happy you are here with us. And that's the 12. I believe that's 12. Jesus had 12. I got to be like Jesus. What do you say? And so we had 12 that are hitting the streets here in D.C. And, Pastor, we thank you for your leadership, what you are doing in our absence, and we're looking forward to a mighty harvest here at the DuPont Church. Now, I have to introduce one more person. She is my first cousin. Amen. Tammy, stand up. The people know you here. Stand up, Tammy. Stand up. That's my first cousin, Tamla Sterling. Give her a round of applause, everybody. I got Tammy out at church on a Friday night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're grateful she's here. But I have not come to D.C. to visit Tammy. I have not come to D.C. to hang out just with Pastor Harris. But I've come to D.C. to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have come to share the love of Jesus but it can't just be Pastor Bird, Pastor Harris, Pastor Tanache, the Bob workers. It's going to take all of us. Oh, come on, say amen. 
It's going to take all of us. Amen? And so we need you here every night, and we need to bring somebody. Now, you all know, back in the day when Pastor Brooks and Pastor Cleveland used to run meetings, we were out under those tents for 6, 8, 10, 12 weeks. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. It was hot, but we were there. We didn't have air conditioning, but we were there. Because we knew as a church that the mission of the church rested in seeing men, women, boys, and girls coming into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, we're only going to be out here two, night, two weeks. Two weeks. So I need you now to set your calendars, October 5th through the 19th, that your face is in this place, your smile is in the aisle as we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying, everybody? We need you here every night. You heard the old adage, it takes a crowd to build a crowd. What do you say, everybody? So we need everyone to be here, and I believe that God is going to pour out his spirit in copious fashion. All right, let's read the scripture. Let's get in the word tonight because you're still a little quiet. Keep playing, brother organist. Don't stop till I tell you. Keep playing. We're filling each other out. We're learning each other. All right, stand up, everybody. We're going to read the scripture. Matthew 4. Matthew what, everybody? Come on, talk to me. Matthew what, everybody? Four. Let's stand and read the scripture. Come on, choir. Stand with me. Stand with me. Pretend we're on TV. You know, the people looking at you too. Matthew 4. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 4. Let's go to verse number 18. What verse did I say, everybody? Come on. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 18. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 18. If you have it, let me hear you say amen. All right. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. The word says, and Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. Simon called whom, everybody? Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the what? For they were what, everybody? Come on, talk to me. They were what, everybody? They were fishers. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. And going on from hence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father. And they did what, everybody? Will you be so kind and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's fishing time. Father, in the name of Jesus, through the intercession of the Holy Ghost, come by DuPont Park tonight. God, we know you're going to be here tomorrow on your Sabbath, but we need you right here and right now. May your Holy Ghost fall and flow free in this place. And may we get fired up and get all excited to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is king, that it is truly fishing time. We pray this prayer asking for forgiveness of sin. Let everyone say amen. And amen. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. It is fishing time. It's fishing time. It's fishing time. Amen. It's fishing time. All right, quickly, let's get in the word. In the text, Jesus is just beginning his Galilean ministry. Jesus has already been baptized. He's already gone in the wilderness to fast and pray. And then the Bible says he's tempted by the devil. Now, understand the sequence of what I just shared. He begins his Galilean ministry, he's baptized by John, and then he goes in the wilderness to fast and pray, but then the Bible says he's tempted of the devil. Let that be a reminder tonight for somebody that it's after your greatest spiritual victory, that's when the devil starts to work on you in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? After you've been baptized, when you turn your life over to the Lord, after you've made a recommitment to do what is right, after you walk down the aisle and give your life to the Lord, that's when the devil starts going crazy on you. Think about it. He wasn't bothering you when you were in the street somewhere. He wasn't bothering you when you were doing your own thing. But it's after your greatest spiritual victory, that's when the devil comes after you. Jesus has been baptized in Matthew chapter 3. Then in Matthew chapter Chapter 4, he's tempted of the devil. But praise God, he withstood the temptations of Satan by standing on the word of God. Do I have a witness in his place? Now the Bible says he comes to Capernaum to begin his ministry. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, that Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee. But this was no pleasure walk or serenity stroll because there was definite purpose to this walk for Jesus had a divine appointment with some individuals whom he had chosen for ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the Bible says that Jesus found some men. He found four in particular. He found Andrew. He found Peter. He found James and John. They ca were casting a net in the sea for they were fishermen. The Bible continues on in verse number 19, and Jesus says to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Here is Jesus calling these men to leave a profitable fishing business to become what he called fishers of men. 
calling them to leave compensated employment to begin charitable service. Fishermen to fishers of men. Understand, these were not religious scholars. These were not the most intellectual men. These were not the kind of men that people thought would be messengers of the Most High God. These were blue-collar guys, ordinary brothers, regular fellows, but yet here is the God of the universe calling them into service. But that's just like my God, always rooting for the underdog, always looking for the least, the lost, the unlucky, and the left out. God uses ordinary people, people like you and me, to do as he commands. Understand, though, that Jesus saw something in these men just like he sees in you and me. He knew what he was doing. He didn't go to the rabbis to pick them to be on his team. He didn't go pick the most brilliant, the most astute, the most knowledgeable leaders of Israel. He didn't go to Jerusalem among the priests and the elders. No, the Bible says he went to the Sea of Galilee. He called fishermen, folk who had never been to school, folk who could not speak the king's English. He relied on something better than formal religion, something better than formal education, something better than ritual, something better than tradition, something better than the way it used to be to the way it ought to be because God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. Man sees the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Man sees pretension, but God sees commitment, and God can call whom he wants, when he wants, where he wants, and how he wants. He calls for these brothers to follow me. If we're going to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and take part in his service, you better understand that we must remember he's the master and we are the servants. He's the landlord. We are the tenants. He is the employer, and we are the employees. He is creator. We are creation. He is the shepherd, and you and I, we are the sheep. The most basic requirement of any disciple of Christ is to follow him. So some people, they have these excuses. Well, I didn't come from the right family. He says, I didn't ask you all that. Follow me. I haven't been in church all my life. I didn't ask you all of that. Just follow me. Well, I have a bad past. I didn't ask you all of that. Just follow me. I don't know how to pray well. I didn't ask you that either. Just follow me. I don't know how to preach well. I didn't ask you that. Follow me. I, I don't have a college degree, a graduate degree, a terminal degree. He says, I didn't ask you that. Just follow me. Quit talking about what you don't have and just use what you do have. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Now, Jesus in the text is not talking about might, perhaps, maybe. Perchance, possibly, this is not estimation, projection, or speculation. This is definite guarantee. I will make you fishers of men. Jesus told these men that he, they would be changed, and he would do the changing. What we are to become for God is not something that we become under our own power because under our own power, I am nothing, can do nothing, and will be nothing. Somebody's not getting it. Let me try it this way. In my power, without God's power, I am nothing. In my power, without God's power, I'm like spaghetti without sauce, macaroni without the cheese, because I'm from down south like collard greens without cornbread. Without God, I'm like burger, impossible burger, hallelujah, without fries. Without God, I'm like peas without rice, or depending which island you come from, rice without peas. But when I unite my power, with God's power, you better look out. Ellen White says the secret of success is the union of divine power with human effort. She says those who achieve the greatest results are those who imply implicitly upon the almighty arm of God. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 4, verse number 20, the Bible says, and they straightway left their nets and they followed him. 
And going on from thence, he saw the two other brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and they immediately left the ship, left their father, and followed him. They left their ship, left their nets, left their way of life. For them, there was no turning back. The call of God was so powerful on their lives that they left the very livelihood to go where Jesus went without knowing where it was going to take them. Praise God for their boldness. Praise God for their faith. Praise God for their example of not letting anything get in their way of serving God faithfully and proclaiming the good news. People are always talking about, I'm not quite ready to follow Jesus. Newsflash, you'll never be ready. I'll never be ready. Our righteousness in God's sight is but as filthy rags. We are all gone as sheep to the slaughter. Jesus never asked us to get ourselves together and then follow him. Look at what he did with these fishermen. Jesus called them to follow him, and then he would make them fishers of men. Now, to be true to the text, make sure you understand I've studied it a little bit. There were three methods of fishing in those days. How many methods, everybody? Come on, talk to me. How many methods, everybody? The first method was by line. Everybody say line. Fishermen used a stick with a string on it, and they fished by line. The second method was the dragnet method. Everybody say dragnet. A dragnet was used from a boat, or better yet, maybe even two boats. It was cast into the sea with ropes on four corners, and it had weight at the foot of it so that it would sink right down in the water. When the boat rowed, it would scoop up the fish. But then the third method was the casting net method. Everybody say casting net. And in this text, that's what the disciples are using. They were casting a circular net about nine feet in diameter in the water. From the edge of the lake, it could be knee deep in the water, and it had rock pellets all around the edge, and it would sink and surround the fish, and they would pull the rope and pull it in. Now, understand what Jesus is doing here. He's saying, I will make you fishers of men. In other words, you're going to go from catching fish to catching men. And Jesus plays now on this metaphor because the way they did it was by throwing out the casting net and catching a whole bunch of fish. Hallelujah, somebody. I said they threw out a net because they were planning on having a big catch. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They weren't just fishing for one fish. They weren't just fishing for two fish. But in essence, Jesus is saying there's going to be a lot of fish, which lets me know that when the Lord thought about evangelism, he had a whole bunch of folks in mind. You see, when I conduct an evangelistic meeting, when I throw out the net, I'm not trying to catch a few fish. I'm not trying to catch one fish. I'm not trying to catch two fish. I'm throwing out a big net to have a big catch. When I get to a city, I don't tell the people that I came to this city to baptize one person. I came to baptize two people. I came to baptize three people. I'm not coming to D.C. for one soul, for two souls, or three souls. But the Lord has sent me here with a casting net to get a huge catch because I don't serve a limited God. I serve a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all we could ever ask for. And I won't be satisfied till Arlington, till D.C., till Gaithersburg, till Lanham, till Largo, till Upper Marlboro, till Columbia, even to Baltimore. Here's the name of Jesus. Because there's no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved. But Jesus, Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon. Jesus, lily of the valley. Jesus, bright and morning star. Jesus, fairest of 10,000. Jesus, 
my up, Jesus, my down, Jesus, my out, Jesus, my in. Somebody said he's a way maker. He's a cancer killer. He's a troubleshooter. He's a pain reliever. He's a mind bender. He's a heart fixer. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and of all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Now quickly, by the time you get over there in your post, amen. Now let me tell you quickly something about fishermen. I've only been fishing twice in my life. And they were both on a men's ministries fishing trip that the church paid for. Come on, say amen. The first time, I caught nothing. The second time, I caught one fish. And I threw it back in at the end of the fishing trip. But I learned something about good fishermen. I said good fishermen have certain qualities. Number one, good fishermen have patience. Everybody say patience. You see, fishermen can't be impatient. Fishermen learn to wait. They know it takes time to find a pool of fish. Likewise, if you're going to be good at fishing for souls, you've got to be patient. Sometimes it takes time to pull them on in. Number two, I learned something about good fishermen. I learned you must have perseverance. It's not a matter of simply waiting patiently in one place, hoping some fish will show up. But sometimes it's a matter of going from place to place and sometimes back over again and again until fish are found. When you work for men and women, you work one area. Then you have to work another area. Then you've got to work it over and over again. You you might go to another area and then come back to the original area, but you've got to perse persevere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number three, I learned that good fishermen have to fish in the right place at the right time. If you speak to any fisherman, he'll tell you when and where the fish are. He'll tell you there are really better times to fish, and these times are impacted by different things like sunlight, weather patterns, topography, geography, and seasonal differences, which means when it's bad for fishing in one location, it might be good in another location. Fishermen have to have a good sense for going to the right place and dropping the net at the right time. Any good fisherman will tell you, make sure you fish in water that actually has fish in it, because because if there aren't any fish, you aren't going to catch anything. Similarly, the soul winner chooses his or her moment and location carefully. The soul winner knows when to fish and where the fish are. Number four, I learned good fishermen have to have courage. Everybody say courage. They'll face the sea for the cause of fish. They'll face storms. They'll face turbulent weather. They'll face bad weather. They'll face being called names. They'll face being doors being slammed in their face. They'll face hot nights and wintry nights, all for the cause of catching fish. Number five, I learned that a good fisherman will stay out of sight as far as possible. He doesn't want fish to be scared. A good soul winner keeps himself or herself out of the picture. He hides his own presence, even his own shadow, and makes sure that the eyes are fixed on Jesus because a good fisherman knows it's not about us, but it's all about him. Number six, I learned in my life that good fishermen are not lazy. Andrew, Peter, James, and John were not lazy. They were hard-working fishermen. God is not in the habit of calling people to serve him who are slothful and lazy. Because if you're a poor worker on the job, you'll more than likely be a poor worker for Christ. God doesn't need any lazy soldiers in his army. Do I have a witness in this place? Number seven, and let me take some time on this. Because we seven-day Adventists and seven is completion. But I got three more after this one. Good fishermen choose the right bait. Any good fisherman will tell you, you have to have the right hooks and the right bait to catch fish. I said you have to have the right hooks and the right bait to catch fish. Many venues have been rented. 
tents erected, resources wasted, and frustrated frustrations mounted, all because people used the wrong bait. You can't use the same bait all the time. Sometimes you must switch your bait. You can't use the same bait that was used 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You have to modernize your bait, modernize your rods, modernize your hooks and your methods. Let me go a little deeper. The same bait, the same rods, the same methods that were used in Jesus' day, they aren't used today. Listen to me good. The message of catching fish is the same. But the bait, the rods, the nets, and the methods are different. Too many people can't catch fish today because they're using the wrong baits. Too many people can't catch fish because they're using old antiquated baits. You can't use old bait in a new world. You can't do internet, you can't do eight track ministry in an internet download social media society. Now you will not out Adventist me. You will not. No one in this room, I don't care who you are, probably Brother Singleton, the only person. You will not out at Venice Me. We got off the morning star. Come on, say amen. I have kept the Sabbath longer than you. What are you talking about? We were taught in our home to keep the Sabbath for 26 hours. One hour before the Sabbath started. One hour after the Sabbath ended because we were taught to guard the edges of the Sabbath. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I have eaten more Ready Burger than you. I have eaten more haystacks than you. You will not out Adventist me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I have learned that the message is the same. It's the same. But the methods of catching fish must be different. And speaking of bait, you have to use different bait for different fish. Any fisherman will tell you, if you want a certain type of fish, you've got to use a certain type of bait, which means the same way you found Jesus may not be the same way somebody else finds Jesus. The same way your mother came in may not be the same way you came in. And the same way you came in may not be the same way your child comes in. The bait for somebody was under a tent, sweating, sawdust in a tent. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And back in those days, to, to catch the rain, we used to build a trench around it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And when the rain would fall, we would let down the walls on the tents. We did not have PowerPoint like we have today. What did we have? We had to go to the hardware store. We had to go to Lowe's or Home Depot, and we had to buy some two-by-fours. And we would then go to JCPenney, because Walmart wasn't popular then, and we would buy a white sheet. And we would take some post hole diggers and we would dig in the ground, drop those two by fours in that ground, and we'd take that sheet and a heavy duty stapler and we would staple the sheet to those two by fours and we called that a screen. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But the bait for somebody today is in a church building. Hallelujah. <laughs> With air condition, do I have a witness in this place? Looking at screens controlled by PowerPoint. The bait for somebody may have been singing power in the blood. But the bait for somebody else might be singing God is. The bait for somebody may have been singing total praise. The bait for somebody may have been the King's Herald Quartet. The bait for somebody else may have been the Breath of Life Quartet. The bait for somebody may have been Mahalia Jackson. The bait for somebody else might be Yolanda Adams. The bait for somebody else might have been Richard Smallwood. But the bait for somebody else 
else might now be Anthony Brown. The bait for somebody might have been a Rogers organ, but the bait for somebody else might be a Hammond organ. The bait for somebody might have been HMS Richards, but the bait for somebody else might have been C.D. Brooks. The bait for somebody else might have been Mark Finley. The bait for somebody else might just have been Walter Pearson. The bait for somebody else might have been John Bradshaw, but the bait for somebody else just might be Carlton Bird because you have to use different bait for different fish. Am I preaching to anybody in this place? Now I'm going to go a little further. You're going to get mad, but that's all right. You will not out Adventist me. Number eight, any good fisherman will tell you you have to catch fish before you clean fish. How can you clean what you haven't even caught? Do I have a witness in this place? When we're fishing for men, we often want to clean them before we catch them. Here we go. You got to be perfect. You have to have it all together. You got to be ready for the translation. You got to be ready for the, you got to know the 2300 day prophecy. You got to know the 70 weeks prophecy. And many of us don't even know it ourselves. We've only heard about it, but we can't explain it. But we want to put people through a scrutinized screening process. And all they want to do is join the body of Christ. How can one sinner deny another sinner the privilege of joining God's church, the privilege of joining Christ's body? All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners saved by grace. God's sanctification, his imparted righteousness, is the work of a lifetime. Day by day, we grow into the fullness of Christ. I've been in the church all my life. But I can't expect somebody to get in 47 days what it's taken me 47 years to get. I've got to catch fish before I clean fish. People are like, you got to be like us. You got to look like us. You got to dress like us. You got to smell like us. No, how about just be like Jesus? By beholding, we become changed. And that's not a watering down of the gospel. That's the gospel of fact. I want people to fall in love with Jesus because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my what, everybody? It's not just about religion. It's also about relationship. It's love, not legalism. It's Christ, not a creed. It's not just about what you know, but who you know. Number nine, I'm almost done. A good fisherman knows how to secure a fish in the hook. So when the fish feels the hook, it struggles to get free. When you fish for men and women and you feel the Holy Ghost hook, they may struggle to break free. But you got to work with the fish to reel them back in. And then number 10, a good fisherman, they pray before they go fish. Lord, protect me as I'm out here at sea. There are a number of dangers out here, but Jesus, be a fence all around about me. Jesus, keep me. The soul winner has to pray before the soul winner goes to fish. Lord, protect me. Guide me as I'm fishing for men, women, boys, and girls. And so, DuPont Park. The work of evangelism, the work of fishing for men, women, boys, and girls, the work of fishing for them out of the sea of sin is the greatest work the church will ever do. God has called all of us to be fishers of men, women, boys, and girls. It is not just my job. It is not just Pastor Harris' job. It is not just Pastor Tanache's job. We are all to be witnesses. We are all to preach Christ. We are all to teach Christ. We are all to live Christ, to speak Christ, to labor in the field for Christ. The greatest work in the heart of God is evangelism. 
winning the loss is God's greatest concern. But not only the father's concern, but the son's concern. It was Jesus who came and said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. The work of winning the loss is not just the father's concern, not just the son's concern, but also the concern of the Holy Ghost. For it is the Holy Ghost who comes, according to John 16, to convict men of righteousness, sin, and judgment. But it's not just the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. It's also the apostles' concern. Because it was Paul who said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And this ought to be our greatest concern, winning souls for Jesus Christ. It's fine time for us to take a hard look at the subject of evangelism. I'm not just talking about DuPont Park. I'm talking about the work here in North America. If it were not for immigration in North America, North America would be dead. We have a great church. This is a great church. I remember coming here as a little boy. This is a great church. We have a great history. We have great buildings. We have great people in our church, great preachers in our church. We have learned great truths. We have great fellowship. But if we're not careful, we can become so impressed with our greatness that we forget about lost people. We can be so busy singing our music in here that we forget they need to hear the song too. We can like it so much up in here that we forget about people out there. Can I preach it like I feel it? Can I preach it like I feel it? We sing what we want. We teach what we want. We preach what we want. We minister to ourselves. We have become so isolated and insulated and incestual in our ministry. And the fruit of incest is always something retarded. And we've got retarded churches because we care more about ourselves than going to fulfill the gospel commission. But I heard Jesus say, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's fishing time and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations and then shall the income it's fishing time fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yea i will help thee i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness it's fishing time if god be for us who can be against us it's fishing time. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. It's fishing time. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It's fishing time. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the power of God unto salvation? It's fishing time. They that wait upon the Lord, God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles, run and not get weary. It's fishing time. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God. Give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. It's fishing time. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. It's fishing time. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. DuPont Park, it's fishing time. love the Lord I won't take that back because he's been so good to me because the greatest fishing expedition 
was not when Jesus grabbed that fishing line. Not when he hung that line, but the greatest fishing expedition was 2,000 years ago when Jesus put his life on the line. He didn't hang on a cross, on a fishing line. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. But that's not how. The story ends. Because in three days, he rose again. That's love. That's love. That's love. Because Jesus went to save a wretch like you. That's love. Jesus went to Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. Everybody stand on your feet right now. Oh, they hung him a high. He hung to me, he died. He didn't have to do it. He could have set himself free, but he did it for you and me. They hung, they stretched. He hung to me. In the name of Jesus, through the intercession of the Holy Ghost, it's fishing time. It's fishing time. Fishing time in Southeast DC, fishing time in Northeast DC, Southwest DC, Northwest DC. It's fishing time. It's fishing time, God, in the DMV. It's fishing time. But Lord, before we go fish, some of us got to get right. God, before we go fish, some of us as fishermen and fisherwomen, Lord, we got to get right. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, through the intercession of the Holy Ghost on this Friday evening, September the 20th, God, if there are some people who are like me and they're saying, Lord, wash me, cleanse me, purge me, get me right, that I might be a fit vessel to go fishing for you be it as an usher be it as a singer be it as a greeter be it as a children's minister be it as a choir member be it as an elder a deacon security god get me right creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me Lord, I've doubted you. We, we can't win souls. I've doubted you. That's what I've said. But God, in the name of Jesus, make me over again. It's too hard. People don't want to accept this message. They don't want to hear about the Sabbath. They don't want to hear about the second coming. They don't want to hear about the state of the dead or the fact that our bodies are God's temple. So God, I don't know if we can do it. God, in the name of Jesus, remove doubt from this room right now. Remove a defeated spirit from this room because God, right now, we want to get right. And so, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us for our unbelief. God, no one in this place is too old to fish. 
No one in this place is too young to fish. God, we can all fish. We can all throw out the net. So, Lord, right now, my appeal is simple. We've got some people that are under the sound of my voice. There are some people, Lord, that are hearing your voice in this place. And they're saying tonight, September the 20th, we got two weeks before this meeting starts. And Lord, tonight we are consecrating and renewing ourselves anew to you right now. Because God, we want to be fit fishermen. Fit fisherwomen. So we're going to get on the phone and we're going to tell people to come out. We're going to get on the internet and we're going to email people and tell them to come. We're going to get on social media and tell people to come. Because God, we recognize you've called us all to be fishers of men, women, boys, and girls. So Lord, I'm going to pause in this prayer. And I'm going to allow men and women, boys, and girls who are serious. And they're saying tonight, God, we're going to begin anew. We, we, we're going to consecrate ourselves over it. And Lord God, we're going out in the fields and we're going to fish. We're going to have patience. We're going we're gonna to choose the right place to fish. We're going to have perseverance. We're going to have courage. We're going to pray before we fish. God, we're going to choose the right bait when we fish. Lord, we're going to catch fish before we clean fish. But Lord, we realize it's fishing time, and so we want to get right, Lord, tonight. So I pause in this prayer. If that's you, you may be a fifth generation of heaven is like me, fourth generation, third, second, first. You might have joined this church a week ago. You may not even be a member of this church, but the Holy Ghost has spoken to you tonight, and you're saying, God, I want to be a fisherman. I want to be a fisherwoman. And I'm, I need that renewal right now. Tonight, if you're here, I want you to come, because I want, I want to pray for you tonight. I want you to come. I, I, you're saying, do something special in D.C. Do something special for DuPont Park. But more than DuPont Park, more than D.C., God, do something for me. Do something in me. Tonight, if that's you and you're here, I want you to come down. I want to touch and agree with you, and I want to pray with you tonight. I want to pray with you tonight. You, you want something to happen, and you want it to happen big, and you're, you're saying, God, negative thinking, negative uh, thoughts, and negative talk, it must be discarded. Lord, tonight... I make myself over you. I make myself available to you. If you're here tonight, I want you to come. I want you to come. You're serious. Lord, Lord, make me over. God, I thought this revival was for everyone else, but Lord, I realize it's for me. Lord, you're trying to save me. Tonight, if you're here, I want you to come down. And we want to touch, we want to agree, and we're going to pray. Jesus went to, Jesus went to. Calvary, Calvary to save like you, you and Jesus did it for you. And so tonight, do you want to make yourself over? You want to say, Lord, we're going to do it. 2019, this fall revival, we're going to do it. The greatest results are when we give ourselves fully to God. We labor for God and then we rely on his almighty arm. The union of human effort with divine power. Are you here tonight? I'm about to pray. In fact, I'm going to ask Pastor Harris to pray. But before Pastor Harris prays, because Pastor, I want you to pray for me too. We go all across this country, all across this world, preaching this gospel, preaching the love of Christ, preaching hope and preaching salvation. But I'm asking God, and I need you to ask God for us, that he do something new, something special here in D.C. We praise God for the 100 plus souls in Miami. We praise God for the 100 plus souls in Tampa, 100 plus souls in New York and all these other places in Chicago. But we need God to do something this fall in D.C. So tonight, if you want to be a part of that, and you're saying, make me over, Lord. I want to be a part of that. And here I am, Lord, send me. If it's to cook in the kitchen, if it's to usher, if it's to greet, if it's to watch someone's baby, if it's to do children's ministries, whatever it is. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Now, before pastor prays, D.C. and DuPont, this may never happen again. 
to have Breath of Life come and a speaker and 12 workers and pastors working together, that there's not a level of professional jealousy. We, we're lifting the name of Jesus and lifting each other's hands and holding each other up. This may never happen again. The resources that have been put into this meeting, this may never happen again. And while we yet have the opportunity to be a part of it, I appeal to you, come, come join, come be a part of this thing. Whether you're a prayer warrior, come be a part. So I'm going to make that appeal one more time. You're here tonight and you're saying, Lord, use me in this meeting. Make me over again. I want to renew my commitment to this message. I want to renew my commitment to this church. I want to renew my commitment to Jesus Christ. Tonight, if you're here, I want you to come. I want you to come. Some people say to me all the time, Pastor Bird, but we need thousands of people to help us do it. We, we need thousands. Well, God gave David five smooth stones. And he only needed one to knock the giant out. God only used two fish and five loaves of bread to feed 5,000. God only used 300 of Gideon's men to defeat the entire Midianite army. So the Lord will take the little we have and he will make it much as we place in his hands. So tonight, Pastor Harris is going to pray for me, pray for my wife, our children, the Breath of Life team, the DuPont Park family, our other churches here in the DMV that like a mighty army. We tear Satan's kingdom down. So tonight, you want to be a part of that even as he prays. Even as he prays, you realize it's fishing time. I invite you to come, Pastor. Father in heaven, we've heard the call tonight. It's fishing time. Because time is running out. Soon he that will come shall come and will not tarry. And Lord, we have become too complacent, too comfortable with just living from day to day and every now and again sharing our, our faith with somebody else or even asking them to come to church. Lord, we plead forgiveness tonight. Yes. Give us a burning urgency in our hearts that says we must go and we must go now before it is everlasting too late. The signs all around us. Yep. Father, we, we ask that you will quicken us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we know, we know that you can do anything. You can do anything but fail. And so we're claiming victory right now. But, Lord, help us to surrender. There's anything standing in the way that keeps us, Lord, from connecting with you and becoming conduits of your love and grace to a world that's lost in darkness. Lord, remove it right now. That's a dangerous request. That's a dangerous request, Lord, but we, we are convicted tonight that if you don't change us, purge us, we can't be used. And, Father, you are calling us to reach out to others. So, Lord, I ask that you will look upon these who have gathered at the altar who were bold enough to come down. And, Lord, I'm still praying for those who may yet still be at their seats, but the desire is in their hearts. Lord, I pray that you will touch everyone under the sound of my voice and that we will respond right now. It's fishing time. Yes. Lord, thank you for our Bible workers yes. who have been working diligently and the adversary has tried to discourage them. But Father, every time the devil tries to beat them down, you send a miracle that restores and revives their faith. So I ask that you will keep them encouraged. 
surround them, surround them, hold them in the hollow of your hand. Let no evil befall them. And when evil men come, may they see 10,000 upon 10,000 angels surrounding them. Lord, help them to seek those who are looking. And then, Father, I ask that you remember my friend, your son, your servant, your evangelist. Father, drench him in Holy Ghost power. Use him. Use him up. Let this be yet another marvelous testimony of what you will do and can do by your mercy. Be with his family, his wife, his children, Lord. Surround his home. Lord, I pray that you will put a covering over him that nothing evil can touch him. Even as he flies back and forth in the airways, Lord, cover him. Use him. Anoint. And Lord, anoint this place. We want people to come in and feel the Spirit of God. Fill it up with angels. Anoint the singers. Anoint the musicians. Be with the leadership of this church. And every member, be with the DMV, Lord, all of our churches. That day we see you face to face. Hold us. Strengthen us. Revive us. Give us the courage. And may we stay on the battlefield where we claim the miracle. We're looking forward to that great baptism. We're looking forward to it, Lord. We got to go ball robes. We got to get, get ready for this great baptism. Grant it, O oh God, to your name's glory and honor. We say together, amen. 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 Put your hands together. Give God the praise tonight. He's a powerful, wonderful, marvelous God. Amen, amen, amen. Just a couple of things before we go. We leave this place tonight. The ushers, the ushers have handbills that you need to take. I ain't hear nobody say amen. The ushers have handbills with your name on them that you need to take and share in your. We've got door hangers and handbills. Don't take one or two. Uh, did we just hear? I'm not trying to fish for one or two fish. We're trying to gather all the fish. I'm trying to get them all. Now, I'm a fisherman. And when I go fishing, I don't want just one or two. I've been ate that up too quick. I, I need some more. I want something to put in the freezer. Okay? I'm looking to fill up the boat with fish. So please, please, as you walk out the door, take, take a stack. Get, some, get a handful. Take all you can and share them. Don't, now, don't let me come to your house and they're up underneath your, your teacups and, and, and you, you use them to prop up the TV and stuff. Don't now. Use these. They are anointed to share with somebody as we are inviting people to come to the kingdom. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together one more time. I just, I'm feeling good tonight. What a day. What a night. What a night. What a night. Thank you, Dr. Bird. Thank you so much. Thank you, team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our opening prayer was given to us by Elder Brunson Brown. And we're going to have our benediction by our first elder, Elder Glenn Evans. Won't you stand to your feet? Won't you stand to your feet? We've heard a word this evening. If you'll bow your heads with me. Our Father, we're so thankful you've sent your spirit here tonight. Father, we're thankful that we have received our marching orders. It's fishing time. So, Father, we ask first that your spirit will continue to dwell, that your spirit of protection will be over past the bird, your spirit will be over the Bible workers, over the members of this church, and as we prepare to go out in Washington, D.C. We also ask, Father, that 
you will give us a spirit of love, love one to each one to another. Because you say that they'll, they'll know that we are Christians by our love. And then, Father, give us a holy boldness as we go out because we are about to cast a wide net throughout Washington, D.C. And now, Father, as we prepare to leave this place, we pray that you will bless us and keep us and that you'll bring us back to this place tomorrow morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Why don't you come on up and shake the evangelist's hand. Tell him how much you appreciate God using him this evening. And make sure you get your handbills and your door hangers. Amen.